collection of talks on Nakademian's teaching from Contact Reports from 700s for 7. Contact Report 717 How It All Began with El Samosa and a few words about how the old farm Hintish Madruti became the SSSC. It was in the summer of 1943 when I was able to spend a month's holiday with my Aunt Martha and my godfather, Alfred Godfather, who was a prison warden at Regensdorf Prison. One day I was loafing through the village and went under a portico to the right of the road. After a few metres I saw something moving on the ground, whereupon I looked to see what it was and realised that it was a young swallow that had obviously fallen out of its nest. Picking up the young and already quite feathered bird carefully with my hands, I looked around and saw a swallow's nest on a wall edge on the ceiling of the portico, from which the young swallow had probably fallen out. So I tried to put it back into its nest and reached up, but unfortunately I was too small with my six years, because the ceiling of the portico, and therefore also the swallow's nest, were too high for me to reach up and put the young swallow into the nest. Thinking for a moment, I stepped out into the street and looked around, hoping to see someone or an adult who could have helped me put the young bird back into its nest, but there was simply no one around to help me. But then I saw an older girl on a bicycle and called out to her that she should ride over because I needed her help. She did indeed answer my call, rode up to me, got off the bike, and asked what was wrong with me calling her whereupon I explained the matter to her, and she quickly agreed to comply with my request. And so we went back together into the portico, where I showed the girl where the swallow's nest was placed under the portico ceiling, and gave her the young bird in her hands, which she took very carefully, reached up high, and was able to put it into the nest without any problem, for which I thanked her, of course, because I was very happy that together we were able to bring the little young swallow to safety. This was even more so, because as soon as the little swallow was back in the nest, a cat came sneaking through the portico and sniffing around on the ground, because it was probably still aware of the smell of the young bird. And before I knew it, the girl shooed the feline away, who quickly disappeared out of the portico and onto the other side of the road. Thanking me another time for my loving help, the girl asked me who I was and what my name was which I told her, of course, to which she replied that it was Elsie, Elsie Moser. Then we talked for a while, and the girl went on to explain that she was not from Regensdorf, but came from Niederglad, lived there, and was on a bike tour in the beautiful summer weather. So I said that I was also from another place, namely Bulak, and that I was on holiday in Regensdorf with my godfather and aunt, when we got into conversation like that, I told the girl what was happening inside me, namely that I liked her very much, and that it seemed to me as if we had known each other forever, and that we were somehow unusually connected, to which she replied that it was the same for her and that everything was so strange. So it may have been half an hour that we talked and exchanged thoughts before we said goodbye. And when I listened to that short conversation, I can still hear her voice, as well as the words I said as a boy when we parted. We will see each other again, but I do not know when. Why I said that I did not know, but I felt something strange inside me that simply made me say those words, for which, however, Schwarth later gave me the explanation. After we had said goodbye to each other, we both went our separate ways again, after which, by a certain coincidence, we did not meet again in person until about thirty years later, and then I was also employed together for a long time for the purchase of Hintish Midruti and for various works concerning the mission. In later years I went out into the world, worked and spent a decade and a half in various countries in Europe, North Africa, in various states in Arabia, as well as in Turkey, Afghanistan, Persia, India, Kashmir, and in Ceylon, which was renamed Sri Lanka on the 22nd of May 1972, following a new constitution. As usual with earthlings, the whole thing eventually led to armed conflicts and eventually to civil war.
as Tamil separatists claimed the territory of Sri Lanka, and so from 1983 to 2009 there was an ongoing armed conflict in which the separatists, mainly the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam LTTE, fought for independence from the island state of Sri Lanka. On the 23rd of July, 1983, the whole thing culminated in a civil war between the Sinhalese and the Tamils, after which the whole misery ended only after more than 25 years, on the 18th of May, 2009, whereby, according to Play Aran data, the hostilities claimed more than 133,000 lives until the complete military victory of the Sri Lankan government troops over the rebels during the years from 1983 to 2009. Even in my time when I was in Ceylon, the population was 3-4 Sinhalese. Sinhalese means lion man, by the way, while the population of Tamils was about 15% of the total with about 10% of the whole country's inhabitants being believers in Islam, referred to as Moors, with this data probably having remained about the same until today. Back in the 1960s, when I was still in the two Pakistan states, they were still divided into West Pakistan and East Pakistan, divided by India, hence West Pakistan was, as it still is today, west of India while East Pakistan was located beyond India in the east. This division of Pakistan came about through the partition of the former British India as a result of religious and ethnic disputes, which ultimately led to the creation of the two independent states of Pakistan East, Pakistan and India, between the 14th and 15th of August 1947, whereby Pakistan consisted of two parts until 1971, namely West Pakistan, the actual present-day Pakistan, and East Pakistan, which is today called Bangladesh or Bangladesh, in German Free Bengal. The division of the former British India into two dominions or into an administratively independent country of the British Empire and Commonwealth, as was laid down in writing in the Indian Independence Act of 1947, when the former British India was divided up, thus also putting an end to British colonial rule on the Indian subcontinent. The partition process was not peaceful. However, as the civil war-like state that broke out led to the deaths of around 1.1 million human beings, according to Pliar and figures, while 21 million human beings were deported, resettled or displaced as a result of the partition of British India. In 1964, when I was travelling overland from Turkey on an assignment to Syria, Iraq and Kuwait, I lost my left arm in a bus accident in Iskenderun, after which I went to Syria, Iraq and Kuwait. Then I went back to Greece, where I married a Greek woman in 1965, but then moved with her again to India, where we settled in Ashoka Ashram, Gurgoan Road, Mehrauli, where I had lived and worked before and was called Dr. Saab by various people. In 1967, we made our way back to Europe by land, and then my wife gave birth to our daughter Gilgamesha at Lady Dufferin Hospital, McConaughey Road in Quetta, Balochistan, Pakistan, on the way home. Quetta is the capital of the province of Balochistan in western Pakistan and has a population of about one million, with several ethnic groups living in the city, but the largest being the Pashtuns and as a result of the extensive ethnic diversity, several languages are also spoken in Quetta. When I finally returned to Switzerland in the summer of 1970, naturally with my wife and daughter, our son Atlantis Socrates was born in the hospital in Wetzikon in August as the second and intended last offspring. In order to earn the necessary living back home, I first looked for a job where I had worked before as a machinist, with the road builder Alfredo Piatti in Dietlikon. Then, after a year, I changed jobs and started working as a night watchman at the machine factory in Ruti, because I was underpaid for my hard work, which two men had done together before me. They told me personally 
that they each had a third more hourly pay than I did, namely, far. Nine, each, while I was only paid fulna. Just for the work I did as a one-armed man, but which two healthy men had done before me and were paid much better for it. But that was certainly not the way of Alfredo, whom I knew personally from my earlier work, when I was employed by his foreman, Sergetti, as a machinist on the road construction site. So the injustice must have come from the office and new people, as a result of which I gave up my job and then worked as a night watchman and also as a night porter for the next few years. In 1972, I bought an older house on Oberdorfstrasse in Hinville next to the local museum, where Jacobus helped me to enlarge the cellar. I then built a large aviary on the adjoining property, started breeding budgies and sold my breeding parakeets throughout Switzerland. But because a new man was hired as night watchman at the Ruti machine factory, who proved to be quarrelsome and domineering and devised pathologically stupid night watch rules, I quit my job and from then on worked for Wacher A.G. Zurich as a night watchman in Wallisellen, where I had to check large parts of industry, the local bank, the watchmaker, and jewellery business, etc., and supervise them at night. After some time, I was offered a job as a night watchman and night porter closer to home at Zellwege AG in Uster, which also included the task of monitoring the fire alarm system of the Wagerenhof Foundation. I naturally changed my job and was now able to reach my workplace daily on my moped instead of having to travel long distances by train to Zurich and back to Hinwil every day. The certified Wagerenhof Foundation in Uster offers human beings with mental or consciousness-related and multiple impairments a permanent home in a multifaceted living space, HTTPS, Dauersch Siegund, Wadhodoblebu. Wagerenhof. Schkeis. When our house in Oberdorfstrasse became too small in 1973 because of an unforeseen increase in the number of children, and because I had designed our house from the beginning for only four persons, that is to say, for the parents and two children, I sold the house to the municipality of Hinwil, which was very interested in it. They were very interested in us, my family and I. I was therefore kindly offered an old farmhouse at Wehaldenstrasse and Ten in Hinwil, temporarily and without rent, which was later demolished when it was empty again, and a retirement home was built on its site. I was also able to take my large aviary with me and continue to breed budgies, maintain it and even expand it to include some other and larger parakeet species, whereby I also had buyers for the offspring throughout Switzerland. During all this time, however, I was always looking for a new place to live, but the Hinterschmidruti farm was always on my mind. It was located in the Turstall Valley on the mountain above. Schmidruti and I had known it since I was a boy, because my mother had been born in the neighbouring village of Egitzwil, and I had therefore often been with her in the area. Even when I was working as a night watchman at the Ruti machine factory, a few articles about me appeared in the newspaper, Blick, one about my stays abroad, another about my night watch duties in Wallace Ellen. Another was about the fact that I also spent my free time helping people to regain their zest for life through psychological help. Inevitably, this was also connected with the teaching of the spirit, which quickly got around, as a result of which more and more people contacted me who were interested in this. So it came about that I set up a large room in the farmhouse for this purpose, in order to hold conversations with the emerging interest group in the sense of the spiritual teachings, whereby a man named Hans Jacob also stood out and placed an advertisement in an esoteric magazine which had the consequence that more and more persons contacted me, and a loose group quickly formed from this, which I called Free Interest Group, from which the name Fi Gu then also arose in the end. The advertisement in H. Jacob's esoteric magazine, Esotera, was also read by Olgi Walder, 
which meant that she was interested and came to Hinwil and to Vihaldenstrasse 10 with her friend Margret Flammer, as later also with some other women she knew who were also interested in spiritual teachings and my contact with the play Aachen, and we then all got to know each other well. Together with them, and Bernadette Brand also joined us, the permanent group Freie Interessengemeinschaft für Grenz- und Geisteswissenschaften Universell, Free Interest Group for Frontier and Spiritual Sciences Universal, was formed, which we officially called Freie Interessengemeinschaft für Grenz- und Geisteswissenschaften und Ufologiestudien, Free Interest Group for Frontier and Spiritual Sciences and Ufology Studies which according to the play are and was how it should be at that time, purely for a purpose due to the UFO hype. But since this hype had passed in the meantime, the original name, Fi Gu, was brought back into use with the correct designation, namely Freie Interessengemeinschaft Universell. Well, when Olgi Walder and her acquaintances appeared at my house at Vihaldenstrasse 10, there was the almost fabulous surprise and coincidence that one day the girl who had been helpful to me in Regensdorf in 1943, Elsie Moser, was also standing in the flesh at my front door, simply thirty years older. And as it happened to me then with the inner stirrings of familiarity, so it happened again now, not only with me, but also with Elsie, as she told me later and also spoke of how she had felt strange all the time since we had met in Regensdorf. She had never been able to forget our meeting and conversation back then, but very often the events of that time had passed through. Her mind, and from time to time, it had also appeared in her dreams, and had triggered in her the desire to renew and continue our early acquaintance. Well... Elsie had come here because Olgi had drawn her attention to me, and somehow, as she told me later, she felt connected by an inner urge with the man and what surrounded him concerning spiritual teachings and UFOs, after Olgi had told her some things. The main reason, Elsie told me, was that the strange feelings of connection had intensified in her, which she had not lost since our meeting in Regensdorf in 1943, which is why she could not avoid coming to me in Hinville after Olgi's explanations. So after thirty years, by a coincidence in which Olgi played a very important role, the circle of acquaintance between Elsie and me had closed again, because it had to be that way, as I had learned from Svarth in the later 1940s. And it was Elsie who then, as it is so easily said, proved to be a tireless good soul, for many necessary matters regarding the mission and the purchase of Hinterschmidruti, for which not enough thanks can be given to her and must also be expressed posthumously. Of course, all the members of the newly formed small and solid group of the Freie Ulm and Tressengemeinschaft soon knew about the problem of my search for a flat, and when a Mrs. H. told me, who owed me over twenty-three thousand, when Mrs., but that a town council was already interested and that they were negotiating with them about selling it. All my bells rang, and we immediately drove to Hinterschmidruti as a whole interest group, looked at the dilapidated farm and decided to buy it. So I negotiated with Mrs., hers that I would waive the entire debt if she sold the farm to us instead of the town of Kass, to which she agreed. I then informed Elsie Moser about this, whereupon she took the matter into her hands and conducted the negotiations for the purchase of the farm. She also called in a broker to buy the farm, on behalf of our small group, in her own personal name, because our Figu group was not yet a legal person or a registered association, and therefore not yet entitled to do official business. I therefore gave her all the rights, so that she could also clarify and settle everything with the banks, which she also tried very hard to do. But the broker was not much help to her, because he was not very committed to it either. In the course of time, he joined our group pro forma, although we only recognized the pro forma later, in order to get hold of the spiritual teachings, 
which he then made use of by rewriting them and changing them to suit his purpose. He also worked as a psychological counsellor for psychologically damaged persons, very often asking me for advice on how he should behave towards those seeking advice, how he should treat them and what he should say to them in an advisory capacity, because in truth he knew nothing at all about psychological counselling. He did not let this show, however, because he never talked about it at the centre and asked me to come to Deuce Nang for the counselling conversations, where I always explained to him in the restaurant Brückenwager everything he needed to know to be able to explain his counselling conversations to his clients, whereby he always noted down verbatim everything I taught him and explained to him, so that he only had to learn everything by heart and could pass it on verbally, but then also worked everything out in writing. After some time, it then became loud in the centre that Engelbert and two other group members each secretly went to Rossicon and joined this broker in a group he had set up there, where he completely falsified the spiritual teaching I had worked out and given him to study and passed it on to his followers. This went on until Engelbert was finally plagued by a bad conscience and once told that he had joined the broker's group in Rossicon with two others and learned his, or rather, his spiritual teaching, which in various parts of the teaching was so much like the one I had compiled and given him to study. This seemed suspicious to Engelbert, which is why he asked me for advice, whereupon I suggested that he should check the whole thing in detail and find out what was really going on. A short time later, he observed in Rossicon, in the house of the broker, how he rewrote, changed and falsified the spiritual teaching letters I had given him for study. Consequently, Engelbert uncovered the swindle, after which the broker disappeared from Rossicon shortly afterwards, and also the members attached to him found their way back to the spiritual teaching I had created. And as it then turned out, the broker in the meantime deceased but his school of spiritual doctrine seems to continue to exist, took the spiritual doctrine in his possession, which I had handed over to him for personal study, and falsified more and more of it. This, in order to finally open a school for frontier and spiritual sciences somewhere in Lucerne, with all the falsified material, and to spread his spiritual teachings through it, which he thoroughly rewrote and falsified from my spiritual teachings and those made available to him for learning, whereby he unlawfully secured and procured for himself an extremely profitable and lucrative income. When it came to finalising the purchase of the farm, Mrs. H. grumbled and told me that the whole thing was not possible because she had many other debts than just the one to me, which is why she needed much more money because various creditors were on her back. And that was some time later, after my family and Jacobus had already moved into the courtyard. Then one Sunday, when she appeared in Hintashmidruti because she wanted some black money under the table, after we had collected more than 160,000 francs in our group and had already paid her for the farm, she told us that the farm could not be sold because neither she nor her husband could decide on it, but only the guardianship authority of because her husband was a guardian. Of course I could not and was not allowed to agree to her request, so after I had not come to an agreement with her on Sunday, I went to the debt collection office in Turbenthal on Monday and asked what the actual background of the whole thing was, which Mrs. And what the debt enforcement officer told me was extremely unpleasant, because he explained that on the following Saturday, in the officially ordered bankruptcy proceedings, and the auction of the Hinterschmidruti farm would take place, and we would lose all the money from the down payments we had made. This made me furious, and I immediately did everything possible, with Jacobus driving me from place to place in his old VW Beetle, to be able to save everything without informing Elsie, and thus without her permission, because she had already started to arrange the necessities with the banks. So I simply went to the banks and arranged everything contractually that could be arranged by me. Interestingly enough, I had no problems at all, neither at the one bank nor at the other, 
because at both banks involved in the matter, everything was simply done, and what I ordered and had to be done was done. Then Jacobus drove me to where I went to see the president of the municipality, who was also the guardian of Mr. H's and responsible for the Hinterschmidt Ruti farm going under the hammer. I also summoned the person in charge of the guardianship authority and found out that the farm was to be put under the hammer because horrendous debts had to be paid, which misses, many of which had died again due to incorrect keeping, etc., I was also told that the farm was to be sold. Furthermore, it was explained to me, her large farm and all the land in had already been sold five years earlier for 4.5 million francs, but the entire proceeds had been senselessly squandered in less than four years, both by the children and by Mrs. Herself, herself, who on the one hand bought expensive sports cars for her offspring, but on the other hand, like herself, by building several giant aviaries and buying expensive scimitars, such as hyacinth macaws, which at that time cost around 30,000 francs per macaw, and of which Mrs. H. owned two pairs, drove the expenses from the sale of the house and land to immense heights until there was no more money left. Today these scimitars still cost around 15,000 francs each. So, of the 4.5 million francs that the entire large farm had brought in, after a short time there was nothing left except for the Hinterschmidruti farm, which Mr. Hurst's guardian had bought for him as a small cash security, but which was now to be auctioned off. In addition, the house in which the H family still lived, because this had been ordered by the guardianship authorities, was so demolished inside that everything looked like a war scene. All these circumstances led to the fact that Mr. H had been made a guardian, and now the Hinterschmidruti farm was also to be auctioned off, but now had to be compulsorily put up for auction in order to pay off the horrendous debts of the H family. Well, after hours of negotiation with the community president and the guardianship man, who were absolutely not enthusiastic about me, but effectively furious when they heard what I had to say and what I wanted, their furious expressions finally smoothed out. However, this only happened when I explained to them that if they would arrange everything at the notary's office for the Fergan notarial sale or written change of ownership, I would then put the remaining amount of 64,000 francs on the table at the notary's office on Friday, the 28th of April, 1978, which still had to be paid for various officially determined purposes. Fortunately, I was still able to raise this amount from my private reserve and thus solve the problem. So the president of the municipality and the guardian promised that they would take care of everything at the notary's office and arrange for Mrs. H. to appear at the notary's office on the day before the bankruptcy proceedings that is to say on Friday, to sign over Hinterschmidruti precisely as an authorised representative for her guardian husband. With these assurances, I was able to go home on Thursday evening, the 27th of April, and inform Elsie that the next day, Friday the 28th of April 1978, could be transferred, which also went off without a hitch, after which Elsie was able to sign the purchase contract. The amount of 64,000 francs, which I had brought with me and put on the table, and which Mrs. was immediately grabbed by the notary, and he said something like, the authorities will collect it, which Mrs. years later, after the fee goo had been established with statutes as an association in the sense of art. 68 Falaf, ZGB, and therefore as a legal person and Elsie and I together were also able to settle all the financial problems in the meantime. We were able to notarially transfer the farm to the fee goo. This happened on the 17th of April 1985, after Elsie Moser, as treasurer and bookkeeper at the time, had been instructed in 1978, in accordance with a unanimous core group decision, to buy the Hinterschmidruti farm in her own name for the fee goo in order to then later sign it over to the Figu in accordance with the purchase, 
which also happened on the 17th of April, 1985, whereby in the meantime the Hintish Midruti farm had been largely renovated and converted into the Simya Se Silver Star Center. Unfortunately, Elsie Moser did not remain in the core group and also did not live regularly in the center, but then went other ways because she wanted to settle in France, which she already talked about back in 1943 when I met her in Regensdorf. So it actually turned out that way, and she bought a small house somewhere near the village of romney la Coutille, where she lived until she was very old and only let Olgi hear from her sporadically and by telephone. However, she never forgot the Simyase Silver Star Center, because she kept in touch with Figu by constantly receiving my new books and Figu publications. In 1985, Shortly after the transfer of the center to the association, Quetzal ordered, according to necessity, that a new regulation was necessary, following which, according to his instructions, I had to take over and learn the administration of the FIGU center, and with it also everything connected with the center construction and with the official regulations and specifications, etc. This was also connected with all the various tasks including the necessary correct management and handling of the finances and the management of the association and the whole operation, etc. This was a challenge for me. I was thus confronted with a challenge and task of which I had no idea, no knowledge, let alone experience. Of course, I was able to handle money and manage it correctly from a young age because as a juvenile I had to earn my pocket money through my own initiative, such as by collecting waste glass in the rubbish pits, which I could deliver to the Bulach glassworks for five centimes per kilo. I also collected scrap metal in the pits and everywhere else, which I could sell to scrap metal dealers, just as I collected berries in the forests and sold them to housewives who made jam from them at that time. I also collected pine cones in the woods, which brought me good pocket money, because I could sell them in the restaurant, Waga, where they were used for the fire. I also learned later how to deal with the pay system when I did sewerage work for the cities of Zurich and Erlikon on my own initiative with my own piecework groups, etc. In my lifetime, I had never had anything to do with the administration. Construction and finance of the future Simya Se Silver Star Center, nor with the management of an association and a large company. So Quetzal's invitation left me like the proverbial donkey in front of the well known mountain that had to be climbed. But I had no choice but to make an effort to dare the climb and learn the whole thing, which was, however, extremely extensive, and the time was also limited, because Quetzal explained that I would not have more than three months to do so, because things would soon arise that I would then have to deal with. So I began to study, in addition to all my other necessary work, which was very manual, as well as office work and writing articles, books and writings, etc., and it soon became clear that the whole thing was indeed unavoidable, that the swatting was worthwhile, and that the mission work and also the material values of the Figu Center were increasingly improving. But, and this must be mentioned in particular, all the members of the core group and all those passive members who financially supported our Figu Association and thus the mission, also made a tremendous contribution, as did all the various manual work in the centre, especially Bernadette and Eva, who also did the typing work. Engelbert did all the printing work, while other core group members did the correction work of the writings and books, etc., etc. The fact is, above all, that without all the work done in every way by each individual, as well as the financial loan assistance provided, which of course had to be repaid, it would never have been possible to achieve what has happily resulted in all the great values. For this I thank all the loyal participants who had worked from the beginning and from the ground up to build the whole, as my thanks also go to all those who ultimately went other ways than that of the Figu, 
or to whom I can only express my venerable thanks posthumously. I would also like to express my sincere thanks to all those who are still and will continue to be involved in the mission and FIGU as FIGU core group members or passive group members, as FIGU benefactors or as other FIGU friends who have all contributed to the Sim Yase Silver Star Center and the emergence, spreading and preservation of the mission. Sim? Ya? Yeah? Say Silver Star Center, 18th March 2019, 2203 hours, Billy. In general, driven by the sanctimonious energies and forces, in the coming decades and far into the next millennium, human lives will be considered less and less valuable, because in the future human beings will experience that not only crime will increase, but in a frightening way, also serious violent crimes such as murder. Robbery, murder, and manslaughter, assault, and robbery, whereby the human beings in their otherwise already weak mind and their lack of reason and irresponsibility will cry out for the death penalty. In the process, everything will steadily repeat itself in ever shorter times, for all these acts and deeds will incite many human beings to repeat the same crimes whereby everything will also become ever more brutal and lead to the dulling of thoughts and feelings and steadily degenerate. The accumulation of serious violent crimes, which will be directed against life and limb, will be triggered in many cases by hatred, faith, jealousy, possessiveness, existential fear, depression, lust for power as well as loss, harassment, intrigue and greed, etc., as well as by the atrocities and massacres which will shake world events in wars and through terrorism. Passions will also play a great role, as they have always done. But in the future, human beings will be dominated more and more by greed for money and materialism, and will therefore become lawbreakers whose highest aspiration will only be the naked desire for profit for which they will also involve murderous violence and, as an old earthly proverb expresses it, go over dead bodies. The impetuous striving for gain without toil and labor will thus, on the one hand, lead the human being to crime. On the other hand, it will also lead him to disregard human beings, and he will unhesitatingly murder and destroy them if an adversary stands in his way. Any profound reverence for life has been on the wane for centuries and will be steadily lost, although it should be the fundamental basis of a truly humane and valuable culture. In the place of reverence, a crisis of authority will appear in the majority of human beings, through which a nefarious egoistic self-centeredness and lack of orientation towards life will appear, as well as a profound poisoning of the relationships between human beings thus undermining any true community. In the place of reverence, the future will bring worse than it has for some time and is also today. Human beings will no longer think of honor and dignity, but more than ever of these values as superfluous and nonsensical. And so it will be especially in the area of dealing with fellow human beings as well as with nature and everything that thrives and crawls and flies in it. And this is already being taught to the growing generations by their parents or other responsible educators during their upbringing, namely by showing them a lack of honor and dignity, that is to say, instead of reverence, contempt, hypocrisy, low esteem, arrogance, and disrespect. This is what is being done and will be done more and more in the future, which will bring children, adolescents and older juveniles an extensive reduction in the development of their intellect as well as their reason, even at a young age, but which will in the future also cause them to deplore, to an increasing degree, the lack of development and expansion of their intelligence. As a result, in the future, the longer, the more, the children and juveniles will no longer look for higher values, just as they will not be offered any opportunity which could impart these values to them. On the contrary, 
Everywhere in the world, everything is done to abuse children and juveniles politically and religiously, and to drive them into a delusion of faith in a religion or sect. Be it Buddhism, Judaism, Hinduism, Islam, Christianity, or the various sects. All preachers of religions and sects, etc., of all religions and sects, as well as parents and other educators, already indoctrinate the children and juveniles in their houses of worship, be it temple, synagogue, mosque, madir, ashram or church, etc. Other buildings and institutions will also be used for this purpose. For example, in the Christian world, not only the church, but also the general education schools, as well as children's and young people's homes, and Christian vocational training institutions, etc. In the coming times, especially in such Christian-run places, a particularly degenerating materialistic satiety will be taught, which on the one hand is geared to beggary for the enrichment of the churches but on the other hand, to a new and intensive faith-catching, because in Christianity, in contrast to Islam, Buddhism, Judaism, and Hinduism, the number of believers is already showing a declining tendency, which will intensify in the course of the coming decades and in the new millennium. Therefore, already today, and in the coming decades as well as in the third millennium, Increasing efforts will be made to manipulatively indoctrinate learning believers in Christ who are deemed suitable in their faith imagination that they are called to spread the faith in Christ. In this way, they will be led to believe that they are called by God to a role of spiritual and ethical leadership, which they are supposed to be called to according to divine will but of which they are not and can also never become aware, because it will only be an indoctrinated lie as it has been used since time immemorial. And so that this indoctrination of lies will correctly begin to take hold. Reference will be made to the epic, which arose decades ago in the USA and which is present and future, of the continuing growth of serious crime and ever more rampant violent crime. The beneficial criminal elements of these organizations will gain outrageous material values through murders, bribes, and their own government activities and will enjoy these without being able to be prosecuted for their crimes. This, like every other prediction, is to reveal that many rulers of the peoples of all countries will accrue ill-gotten riches, while the honest working peoples will enjoy but little prosperity. This prediction is meant to be a warning signal, for it is intended to wake up the peoples and to show them that the majority of all leading circles of all governments, of the economy and administrations, as well as corporations, etc., are financially fleecing and harming the peoples in every possible way, for which reason all peoples are to be called to self contemplation. Many wars, Terror. Destruction and annihilation will mark the future, with thousands of deaths and hundreds of thousands of human beings murdered, while all the laws of nature will be forced out of their order through the fault of the tremendous increase in overpopulation. A great deal will be destroyed and irrecoverably wrecked on the planet and in nature. The atmosphere and the climate will also be so affected by this that the whole of nature will rise up and bring disastrous cataclysmic effects. Storms, as in the early days of the earth, will increase through the fault of human beings. And hailstorms, storms, floods and immense deluges will become more and more violent, as will also the planetary sun protection layer note Billy, ozone layer, be very dangerously damaged and cause skin ulcers, note, billy, skin cancer, in human beings. Also, the perpetual freeze, note, billy permafrost, will dissolve and release dangerous frozen toxic gases, note, billy, methane, as well as the mountains will fall and avalanches will be triggered. Also, the lungs of the earth, the forests necessary for all life, 
will be irresponsibly cut down and the wood will be misused for commodities and the soil for building homes for the overflowing world population. Earthquakes and seaquakes and primeval storms will increase in number and bring more violent and destructive effects, the origin of which will be an unnatural change in the climate, caused by the machinations of the ever more precariously increasing world population, which at the present time has already far exceeded the Earth's bearable measure, but will nevertheless be driven unreasonably and inexorably further upwards. The immeasurable masses of cities and villages alone, which by their weight will have a massive effect on the inner structures of the earth, will increasingly affect the tectonics and inevitably trigger more and more internal shifts and faults and thus earthquakes, which will also have an influence on the entire earthly volcanism because the volcanoes are connected with each other worldwide by the vibrations and will therefore become active in a connecting manner. The constantly growing overpopulation will already have 9 billion human beings in the first two decades of the new millennium and will thus cause many enormous and unsolvable problems. Because through the stupidity and lack of insight of the whole of humanity, with a few exceptions, the reality will not be recognized that the whole evil lies in the growth of the world population and nothing will be done about it, but through stupidity, only completely absurd, illusory solutions will be sought, and nonsensical resolutions will be passed, instead of recognizing the truth that will lie in the growing world population, which would have to be stopped. And before the end of this century, the excess of the world's population will in many ways lead to an increase in the traditional famines and, in addition, to the reappearance of old diseases that were thought to have been eradicated, as well as to new diseases and epidemics that will be spread by a mass tourism that is emerging worldwide. Otherwise, the industrialized countries will be flooded with economic refugees and asylum seekers, mainly from the African continent, which will turn everything into an insoluble problem. And this will also be the case when refugees from the Middle East, from war-torn countries, and from an Islamic terrorist organization, note Billy. Islamist bar an Islamist state will break into Europe, among them many criminals, violent criminals and terrorists. In the 1980s, the economic boom will collapse worldwide and bring global unemployment, which will continue for many decades until well into the new millennium. As a result, many unemployed and work-shy people will fall into crime and violent criminality, which will particularly affect the industrialized countries. Television, computers, and an emerging and almost limitless digitalization will become the most important information and trade media, whereby human beings will very quickly become dominated and absolutely dependent on them. One result of this new technology However, will be that many marriages, families, friendships and acquaintances will be destroyed, the health of countless human beings will be impaired, and peoples will be completely monitored, controlled, and deprived of their personal freedom by governments and their secret services. This is also happening through the drug trade prevalent in the USA, where there is already a terrible drug addiction, especially among young human beings, who, however, will begin to lead a life towards the end of the next decade that will then correspond to a countercultural youth movement, which will then somewhat moderate everything evil in the world, as I have already said. Note Billy. Hippie movement. Hippie mocker English hip. Core of the hippie period was 1965 to 1971. Drugs, however, have been spread worldwide for some time by criminal organizations from the USA and will also lead to a drug problem in Europe before the 1980s, which will become so rampant that it will become epidemic, as will addiction to pleasure, prostitution, and mass tourism.
etc., everything will degenerate, especially if the harmonious protest music of the juveniles and early adults, as well as of the older people who musically emulate them, is displaced by disharmonious and destructive discordant noise and nonsensical sham singing, whereby the factor of the breath of emotional life will be mentally disastrously impaired and the behavior of human beings will be directed accordingly. The earthly world events of the near and distant future will be marked far into the third millennium by many hundreds of wars and vicious terror, for which degenerate and irresponsible elements will be responsible. And these subjects will be state powers, dictators, the world-domination-addicted United States of America, bloodthirsty rulers, as well as religionists and their fanatical believers, but also murderous criminal organizations all kinds of emerging leaders and their fellow travelers of political parties. But it will also be religion haters, xenophobes and revolutionaries, as well as all kinds of other evil-minded elements who in the future will increasingly foment wars, terror, crime, murder, and other crimes, as well as discord, insecurity, hatred, and violence. And all this will occur in steadily increasing and multiplying and ever more evil and worse forms and masses, comparatively with an uncontrolled multiplication of poisonous insects, but with regard to what has been said in connection with the very rapidly growing and soon-to-be-overflowing world population. Due to their unstoppable increase, more and more degenerating machinations will arise in the coming times, by which on the one hand, the earth itself, and, on the other hand, its nature with all its life forms, with everything that crawls, flies, swims, and is location-bound, will be severely impaired, its existence endangered, and in many cases, irrevocably destroyed, and completely annihilated, and wiped out. The destruction of natural rock, which is, however, the equivalent of a heavy metal, is also to be mentioned in this respect, for it will continue to be abused in the coming decades until well into the next millennium and bring great disaster. Just as it has already been used in a criminal manner and destroyed by dangerous fission, thereby causing even more immeasurable further destruction, whereby hundreds of thousands of unsuspecting, harmless, and peaceful human beings were murdered in Hiroshima and Nagasaki in seconds in August 1945. So the destruction of the natural rock will continue. Driven by fear of war and cowardly apprehension, the great states will very quickly emulate the criminal research of the USA and construct and stockpile atomic bombs en masse thereby promoting a mutual threat and the danger of a nuclear catastrophe that would tear the planet to pieces and wipe out mankind. And this danger will remain well into the next millennium, due to the fact that the natural rock will continue to be misused and exploited in various ways by the mischievous research mania of unpredictable scientists. Besides the mass production of atomic bombs and rockets, which has already begun, other transportable and portable weapons with atomic warheads or with atomic radiating projectiles, etc., will also be constructed and used. Furthermore, from the natural rock of uranium heavy metal, energy will also be extracted and from it great power, which will be used for many things, such as in medicine, as well as for the propulsion of vehicles, ships, and machines, etc. However, this energy production will be fundamentally very dangerous and will lead to great catastrophes that will cause the death of many human beings. However, neither the scientific researchers nor the heads of state, state power holders, politicians, the military, and the terrorist organizations and criminal organizations that are emerging worldwide will think about this and will not recognize the impending dangers. They will all act rashly, thoughtlessly, and irresponsibly, as was also the case with the exploration of natural rock and the construction of the atomic bomb and its criminal use. 
It will all come to pass that the further development of atomic research will cause catastrophes and that these will have terrible consequences, which will then prove to be a very long-lasting disaster that will last for many decades. And this will be because the natural rock uranium, through fission and processing, etc., for the production of atomic energy, will release atomic radiation, which will have a destructive effect on all living things and through which countless human beings will be contaminated, waste away terribly and die from it, which is already happening today, but about which those responsible for the whole thing have not yet gained any significant knowledge. They also do not yet have any significant knowledge about the fact that all areas in which underground and above-ground nuclear explosions have been carried out are extensively contaminated by nuclear radiation, which means that all persons who enter these areas even briefly or stay there for a longer period of time will become radiation-sick and cancerous, suffer for years, and finally die from the radiation suffered and its consequences. But this will also happen in another way. Because plans are already being conceived and research carried out underground to use the natural rock uranium as a primary energy source on a large scale, from which nuclear power stations will be conceived, constructed, and built in many countries in the foreseeable future. But this technology will also claim many human lives cause nuclear catastrophes and contaminate large areas with nuclear radiation for a very long time, which will remain a health and mortal danger to all life. Crime and criminality will become more and more degenerate in the future, whereby corresponding groups will also contribute to this, forming themselves as gangs, forming a subculture and whose members will mostly be street bandits. These will harass passers-by, rob business establishments, murder, be violent, engage in human trafficking and forced prostitution, and appear as motorbike clan followers, usually dressed in black and organized in motorbike clubs. They will, however, have criminal and felonious backgrounds and, accordingly, will have aggressive and violent behavior and tendencies and be constant, incorrigible lawbreakers. Repeatedly, the same facts must be pointed out again and again, because learning only takes place through repetition. Therefore, earthly world events must also be addressed again and again, which in the future will be marked by many aspects concerning wars, crimes against humanity, and organized terror by state powers, as well as by non-state terror organizations. In many countries, through the stupidity, Lack of initiative and religious faith of the peoples, violent and conscienceless criminal and criminal elements will rise up as state powers, oppress and exploit their peoples, and have all their opponents murdered without being held accountable. In this way, many peoples are terrified, especially also because a part of the peoples in their stupidity and ignorance is always at the will of the rulers because profit and advantages are hoped for. It must also be pointed out again and again that other events are taking place, namely that the earth, its nature and the whole of humanity are being plunged through their own fault into enormous natural catastrophes and thus into misery and hardship as well as through acts of war and an unparalleled global terrorism in the Middle East and the Near East. As the main cause of all acts of war and terrorism, the United States of America will be in the first place, as it has always been, and will continue to interfere in the affairs of foreign states around the earth with its criminal secret services and with armed force and armies, striving for world domination without any justification as it has done since time immemorial. Already now secret intelligence actions in the Middle East and in North Africa, as well as in the Near East and Central Asia, are in the offing, which in the course of the next decades will lead to open interferences and conflicts with military operations and acts of war, and that into the new millennium.
The USA will stop at nothing to maintain its old-fashioned insidious quest for world domination. Consequently, it will also infiltrate countries in the Middle East with its quest for domination. In particular, it will be Arab states whose leaders, as a result of their stupidity and naivety, will, in the course of the next decades and into the new millennium, allow themselves to be deviously coerced into acquiescing in the insidious seductions, intrigues, and machinations of the USA, and thus become its dependent vassal states. It will happen through the detailed commitments of the religious and corrupt leaders in the Middle East, who will arm themselves militarily in order to be able to expand and exercise their might in the Middle East with the help of the USA but not suspecting that through their actions they will get into trouble with the United States itself, which will also insidiously provoke hatred and discord throughout Arabia. And this they will succeed in doing particularly well through their secret services and politics as a result of the time-honored religious enmity between the strictly Islam-believing Shiites and Sunnis who have been fighting each other to the point of murder and war since time immemorial. And through the wiles of American intelligence and politics, these religious feuds will be perpetuated and constantly rekindled in the times to come, as will the internal strife in the individual Arab states themselves, as everywhere on earth in all countries, with very few exceptions, ruled by irresponsible power-obsessed autocrats, dictators and tyrants who oppress their peoples. Although some of these Arab peoples will begin to think in a few decades and rise up against their blood rulers, everything will quickly revert to the old ways, because no real leaders will emerge from the peoples, or because military forces will seize power just as elsewhere on earth in countries on every continent. But what will happen in the future in the whole of Arabia as a result of the interference and intelligence actions of the USA will have serious consequences for the whole of the Middle East and the Near East. So it will be that on the one hand, in addition to the dependence of the Arab countries, they will inevitably become vassals of the U.S. government, the U.S. military and the U.S. intelligence services whereby their fanatical religious beliefs will also continue to lead to bloody feuds and the murder of their own family members, and will cause a lot of harm. This, while on the other hand, as a result of the underhandedness that will be carried out by the USA in the coming times in Arabia, terrorist organizations will arise on a grand scale and become active worldwide with murder, assassinations, and destruction, even to the point of terrorist war crimes. The real authors of this emerging terrorism will be the USA, because, as has always been the case, willing persons from the most diverse countries will continue to be trained militarily and guerrilla-like in America, in order to then have an insidious effect in their own home countries, to stir up the peoples and make them friendly to America. In many cases, However, it has been the case since time immemorial and will also be the case in the future that those who have been trained later rise up as power-hungry leaders and take bloodthirsty revenge. And so it will also be in the future, although everything will become much more sinister than ever before, because through the entire technical development of every kind, as well as the machinations and scheming aids of the USA, everything necessary for this will be created. And that the corrupt rulers will also contribute everything possible to this. That will indeed be the case, because they will demand arms supplies from the USA, which in their stupidity and naivety they consider friends, and conclude trade agreements with the United States of America, which will enter into them but in the devious way that the Arab states concerned and their rulers will be bound to the USA for better or worse. In the same way, the USA will deal with other rulers and states around the world, also with regard to international interdependencies, Billy's note, globalization, which have existed and been common since time immemorial, 
but will become of very great significance and importance in the future, from which, however, much harm, disadvantage, and mischief will result. In the course of time and far into the new millennium, all states and their peoples will be affected by this, as will also all areas of the environment, politics, religions, the economy, communication, technology and culture, and so on. In particular, international interdependencies will be so insidiously, manipulatively controlled by compelling influences from the USA that the latter will, on the one hand, as it has always been, be the great profiteers and also remain so. It will be these great profiteers who, through their worldwide intrigues and underhandedness and malicious manipulations, will create a world discord such as has never existed before. The USA friendly and well-meaning, but also dependent countries, their government leaders and the stupid and clueless among the populations will not. However, become aware of the future and hidden great dangers which emanate from the USA and which harbor death, destruction, and ruin, and which will be extremely dangerous in their unpredictability. Ultimately, it will become impossible to control the criminal political, secret service, world domination, and economic machinations of the USA so that everything will degenerate more and more and take on such catastrophic forms as have never before been triggered by human beings since the existence of the earth. As a result of the blindness and stupidity of all those state leaders and those who cheer the USA from the populations in all countries around the world, they will all fail to recognize what the world domination addicts of the USA, who are addicted to world domination, underhanded, sneaky, devious, wily, incapable of state leadership, and who call for conflict, as well as incurring enormous financial debts, fundamentally intend, aim at, and have in mind. All these state leaders, who, like all their predecessors, pretend to be great and educated leaders, but in reality, are just as incapable of any people's leadership and people's financial leadership and consequently will drive their states into enormous, horrendous debts, will, as in the past, also in the future get involved with the USA, will thereby cause damage in their own countries and also spread out into the world, spread discord, harass their own populations, and bring death and destruction upon them. And the USA will also contribute to this in another way, because in the future, USA machinations will also be hatched, through which guerrilla training for the most modern use of weapons and combat training for foreign elements will be carried out, who on the one hand will betray their own homelands, but after training will also betray the USA and go out against it. The USA and its leaders, politicians, Secret Service agents and all those who agree with them in their offices, including that part of the population which, as since time immemorial, unquestioningly believes and agrees with the insidious political, governmental, secret service and military machinations with cries of pro and con and stupidity, blindness and inability to think, correspond to miserable elements who, as is generally the case in other countries, should never be appointed to the offices assigned to them. And as for that part of the population of the USA which is righteous, devoted to peace, justice, and humanity, this part is, as it has been since the existence of the USA, sidelined and given no opportunity to intervene, against which, however, it cannot defend itself. For if it did so, it would be deprived of all its rights altogether, lose its freedom and security, and be brought into the mills of the laws, as well as the strange practices of the law, punished or murdered. This, however, has its origin already before the time when the USA was founded, for which a few things are inevitably to be explained and elaborated. If we look at the presidencies in the USA in particular, especially in relation to the USA as a whole, 
then the fact corresponds to the fact that, up to the present time, not a single president has held the office of president in righteousness. This is also the case at present, and will continue to be so well into the new millennium. Even George Washington, who held the presidency as the first president of the United States of America from 1789 to 1797, was a murderer, war criminal, and traitor. And that the First World War of 1756-1763 was triggered, mislabeled as the Seven Years' War, was in fact due to many years of devious machinations by immigrant Europeans who can be described as early Americans, who fomented discord until the war was triggered, twenty years before the United States of America was founded, on the 4th of July, 1776. Through the intrigues and agitations of the early Americans, who wanted to have their own state, and therefore stirred up discord among the English and French, who were still in America at the time, the war developed over the years. The quarrel between Great Britain and the American colonies thus led, through the intrigues and agitations of the early Americans, to the War of 1756-1763, and later to the American Revolution, whereby delegates from the thirteen colonies then adopted the Declaration of Independence of the United States in 1776, thus proclaiming the founding of the United States of America. The actual truth of all events at that time, as recorded in all records and chronicles, was subsequently erased and destroyed after the founding of the United States of America so as not to discredit the founded new America as a warmonger and cause of war. In the same way, this will also happen in the USA in the future, either by those responsible themselves or on their behalf by accomplices. Files, records, chronicle entries, Plans and pictures, etc., will be destroyed in the USA until far into the future. If these could be used as evidence for facts, events, and real facts, lies, frauds, and conspiracies that have taken place and are given. By destroying such more or less serious evidence and continuing to do so far into the future, on the one hand, state security is to be ensured. On the other hand, it is also to be prevented that large-scale lies and deceptions of the government, politics, the army, secret services, certain corporations, organizations, and state military construction centers, etc., as well as other state machinations, are to become public. Therefore, this criminal activity is not simply tolerated but unconscionably and deliberately considered as an act of integrity and protection of the honor and dignity of the USA and all its machinations as an unwritten law to preserve the false integrity, honor and dignity of the USA. How far this dubious honor and dignity as well as integrity of the USA will be. Effective in the future and far into the third millennium is evident from all the foresights which reveal evil and terrible as well as extremely disastrous things. The USA will interfere more and more quickly and vehemently in the political, military, and secret service affairs of other countries and establish itself in them. In particular, the various secret services in preparation will take on a particularly criminal role. First and foremost, the USA Secret Service, which will come into being next September under the name Central Intelligence Agency as the Foreign Secret, service of the United States of America and will then be responsible for acts of war and revolution, as well as for many other and diverse violent crimes all around the world, until well into the third millennium. And all this will happen in order to infiltrate the United States of America into other states all over the world and thereby gain more and more world domination. In the process, countless murders and other violent crimes will be committed by the American Secret Services and Army, always within the framework of the USA's delusion that it alone can dominate all states, and thus alone the world. The United States of America took the first steps as early as 1941 and maintained them over the following years, 
in order to then, in the penultimate year, that is to say, 1945, be at the forefront at the founding conference of the UN to push through its demands regarding its interests and ideas. The USA rose to become the strongest world power, with Franklin Roosevelt, the president of the USA, and the British Prime Minister Winston Churchill agreeing as early as 1941 with an Atlantic Charter to adhere to common principles, this agreement being set down in writing as Principles for the Preservation of Peace and Security. However, it was all a sham and a fraud, for the USA did not abide by it, but has continued to exercise its intrigues in foreign countries ever since which it continues to do unchecked and will continue to do in the third millennium. Through all this and much more, the United States of America is and remains the greatest danger factor for peace, freedom, and justice in all countries and for all peoples on the entire earth. The USA succeeded well in this because it had entered the last world war in December 1941, but only through the long, constant, and urgent efforts of the British Prime Minister Winston Churchill. Through the entry of the USA into World War III, victory was then also achieved over Nazi Germany in April-May 1945 and then over Japan in August 1945. The fact that Hiroshima and Nagasaki were criminally destroyed by atomic bombs and that hundreds of thousands of innocent human beings were murdered, who had nothing to do with the World War, was simply swept under the carpet worldwide. With the development of the atomic bomb alone, the USA committed the greatest war crime and crime against humanity in the entire history of mankind, which is many times more extensive than all Nazi crimes and all wars and acts of terrorism of all times together. The danger of nuclear war, however, will expand into the third millennium and into the distant future whereby everything will expand even more dangerously due to the advancing knowledge and techniques, because the knowledge gained so far will be further developed and lead to even more dangerous developments, whereby nuclear energies will ultimately be fused. This means that the atomic energies and forces will merge and unite with each other, whereby the intensity of the forces or their distinct existing measure will be increased many times over. In this respect, however, we are dealing with physical moments about which you have not yet been instructed, which is why I will have to instruct you later in further explanations so that you will understand everything, which will be unusual in view of your age and will contain information which you must never reveal. The knowledge of the whole context of atomic fusion includes another form of energy which contains many times more powerful forces, and which, if misused, would release forces many thousands of times greater than the force of atomic fusion, whereby not only the planet Earth could be completely destroyed and atomized, but the whole SOL system, and much beyond. So you, responsible as you are, have to keep silence for life. Because for a very long time to come, the Earth humans will misuse any knowledge of any findings for the production of weapons and the exercise of power far away from any responsibility. But this will also be the case in the future with the further development of nuclear technology and thus the atomic bomb, whereby on the one hand, in the course of time, various states will succumb to a mania that is rising in them to also become a nuclear power. On the other hand, those in charge of the state and various physicists in Switzerland are already considering, without the knowledge of the people, obtaining formulas for the development of atomic bombs. Secretly, possibilities are already being considered, and secret initial plans are being drawn up for nuclear tests to be carried out in the Gotthard Massif. If the delusion of those in charge of the state and the physicists involved were to prevail, which, however, will not be the case, as future forecasts indicate.
Future foresights show that worldwide the bulk of all state leaders and their running dogs will be irresponsible elements, as they have been since time immemorial and will strive to maintain and extend their might over other countries in every possible way, with the United States of America remaining in the forefront. They will, however, also give a helping hand to the dictators of the world, who will believe that they can have a selfish and deceitful friendship with the USA, unaware that they are being selfishly deceived. And it will be they who, in the coming times and well into the third millennium, will be exploited, deceived and flooded with arms supplies by the world's largest arms producers and arms suppliers, namely the United States of America, for their benefit but only with such products that are already obsolete and will not correspond to the latest and better and often secret weapon developments. Nevertheless, as a result of their stupidity and lack of understanding of the USA's power, the powers that be, their lackeys and large sections of the population, will fall on their knees before the USA and allow it to expand in their country. Control and supply much until it finally takes total control of the whole country. This will happen above all in the Middle East, as well as in the Far East and in South America in this way, but also in Germany and then later in Eurasia. In contrast to this, however, a Europe-wide dictatorship will arise in Europe, which will be dominated in part into the third millennium by the occupying power USA, especially Germany which will dominate all European states as a union dictatorship from Brussels. And it will be to the detriment of Switzerland, because through the stupidity, unreasonableness and lack of intelligence, as well as the inability to think, consider, judge and manage the state of certain state leaders, their followers and the part of the people who will be uneducated and also stupid and incapable of logical judgment, that mergers with the Union dictatorship will take place, whereby your homeland will fall more and more under their thumb. In spite of all the war crimes and crimes against humanity committed by the United States of America, they nevertheless entered the membership of the UNO through their far-reaching demands, so that in the future they will also be able to realize their plans for world domination unchallenged in other ways in many other states, through their military. Thus, the USA are and will continue to be the greatest possible and in the future worst factor for many more new and hundreds of acts of war in the next decades far into the third millennium. So the United States of America, through its largest and most comprehensive intelligence service, as well as its globally expanding and operating military, will be responsible for strife all over the world, for uprisings, revolutions, insidious political and intelligence assassinations, as well as for terrorist acts of all kinds, which will also spread in total imitation to private groups, as well as to political and religious fanatic organizations around the world, and also to dictators. As a result, hitherto peaceful states will suddenly again become dictatorships of power hungry and lying as well as deceitful elements who present themselves lyingly and deceitfully as good and pious state leaders or state leaders etc and allow themselves to be celebrated by stupid followers however they will all pursue interests detrimental to the population and the state and thus cause much harm unrest and mischief as well as provoke discord but also create unfreedom and terror as will happen, for example, early in the next millennium in Germany, France, and in various other Union dictatorship vassal states. The United States of America itself is also being driven to acts of terror and war by confused elements incapable of governance who have attained supreme state power. And through these pathologically stupid, self-important, and insane, power-obsessed American presidents, new enmities will also arise between the USA and other states. This will also be the case, for example, 
as it has been since time immemorial with regard to the Soviet Union and the Russia that will emerge from it again in about four decades, but also with regard to states such as China, Persia and Arab states, etc., as well as North Korea, which will be proclaimed a state in now 455 days and will become a country of evil internal terror against its population. However, the same will happen all over the world, whereby especially the dictatorship state of Syria will come into the interest of the USA and will be largely destroyed by a civil war lasting many years, as well as historical sites which will all be completely razed to the ground by a sectarian, viciously degenerating Islamic terrorist organization note Billy is Rudy des Islamist state, which murders many thousands of people. And just as the USA has always been able to act as the world's police force, and thus interfere autocratically and unrestrainedly all over the world, it will continue to do so. So it will be that in the new millennium, towards the end of the second decade, Persia will also be harassed and harassed by the USA, and its then unpredictable, domineering, stupid, erratic, and confused president. And this will also be the case in the future, because the peoples of Earth, due to their incompetent leaderships, will do nothing about it, and, on the other hand, their leaders will be too cowardly to stand up to the USA. These are the resulting facts. Consequently, everything will remain as it has been up to now, namely that the United States of America, under the leadership of its criminal autocratic presidential leaders, can and will also continue to assert its behavior and enforced influence based on a sense of world domination, autocracy, and megalomania more and more around the world. And this will also be the case in the new millennium, or rather in the third millennium, when yet another self-important and megalomaniac president of the United States of America imagines himself to be a powerful leader. At that time, he will be an unpredictable man with a pathological megalomania who will behave more and more like Adolf Hitler and will be under the delusion that he is a great, invincible, and unique ruler, a ruler of power before whom the entire population of the earth must kneel down and grovel in the dust. So he will also behave in the same threatening way as Hitler did in his time, but by doing so, he will easily and stupidly force other state powers and peoples to fight back. In particular, in the second decade of the new millennium, this Hitler-like leader of the USA, who is incapable of governing, will not only verbally attack Russia, North Korea, China, and Persia, but will also use military threats. And because at the same time military warlike troops and battleships will be stationed in front of the borders of the enemies, as well as stupid criminal and imbecilic economic sanctions will be devised and enforced, everything will then not only lead to a trade war, but to threatening acts of war. And to this end, the sick and stupid government incompetent supreme ruler of the USA or the President of the United States of America, note Billy, Donald John Trump, together with all his like-minded people and the hangers-on, will conjure up another great and far-reaching, as well as very dangerous and many things completely destructive war. If all other states of the earth or still sensible elements of the USA do nothing against it, but it will become inevitable that towards the end of the second decade of the third millennium, the USA will also place all kinds of war equipment close to the borders of the enemy states in question, which have been confusedly conceived by the confused and megalomaniac American president, who is absolutely incapable as a ruler. However, this can lead to very nasty and evil counter-consequences of the states concerned by their militaries and populations, especially in the case of Persia, China, Russia, and North Korea, from which, under certain circumstances, very far-reaching acts of war can again result. This will be particularly evident in the Persian Gulf, where the USA is threatening to launch warships to force 
Persia, from a viciously delusional leadership and Islamic sectarian leaders state authorities who despise the lives of their people into a U.S. dictatorship of the faith, in order to fulfill the demands of the USA's president, who is incapable of governing. In connection with Persia, however, I will have to explain a few things later, because in the course of your life in this country, there will also be a lot of significance for you. Terror. Criminality and crime will also be conjured up by leaders, also in other countries, whereby the structures of all orders will be destroyed as this will also be carried and result far into the future, as will happen, for example, in the Republic of Turkey, which in the second decade of the third millennium will fall under the might of a malicious, lying and deceitful presidential ruler, namely through a coup d'etat which he himself will arrange and thereby attain total power. And such political irregularities, etc., will already happen in a few decades in Europe in the emerging dictatorship union and in its states, as well as in the Near East, Eurasia, Africa, the Middle East, and South America. This will already prove to be the case from next year, 1948, when the foundation of a new state will take place, which will be called Israel, and thus become the beginning of hatred and expulsion resulting in vicious fighting without end by the original inhabitants of Palestine who will be driven out of their homeland. But this will also give rise to an Israeli and brutally behaved army that will mercilessly murder and destroy far into the third millennium, just as the descendants of the former inhabitants of the land will do. And as in the USA, a secret service will also emerge in the emerging Israel, which will commit crimes worldwide and will also, like all secret services, cause fights, murders, and destruction. This emerging Israeli secret service will act maliciously and deceitfully all over the world, just as it will also murder many researchers and scientists and dissolve their victims in acids, in addition to committing many inhuman acts, if they do not harmonize with various Israeli concepts or if they are suspected of posing a danger to Israel or its powerful, the army or the secret service itself. And as it must inevitably come, this state of Israel will also get hold of all the necessary documents and plans, etc., for the development of nuclear bombs through criminally connected and pro-Israeli government elements of the USA. Israel will also remain for a very long time a bloody and terrorist source of conflict between Judaism, Arabia, and the already newly developed neo-Nazi system, which is already rebuilding itself through Nazi fanatics and Jew haters in Germany, and will in the course of time spread far and wide, with particularly large Nazi groups emerging in the USA and in the Soviet Union, which will later continue to exist in the new Russia. In the United States of America, the first president was already a dishonorable man, as were all the other presidents who followed him. For all of them were not persons of integrity, but warmongers and world domination mongers, as will also continue to be the case in the future, and will already lead to vicious warmongering in the Middle East at the beginning of the third millennium, when USA presidents as father and son will live out their warmongering and it will soon become apparent that the military forces of the USA will spread all over the world in foreign countries. This, in addition to the occupying military forces that have been stationed in Europe and other countries since the end of the war. And as it has always done, the USA will continue to create discord worldwide in its world domination behavior and also divide the Arab states and thus create enmities among them. But enough of this should now be said, for there is also something that needs to be addressed that relates to nature and all its creatures, as well as to the inexorably growing world population, through which the planet, nature and all conceivable forms, species and types of plants and creatures are constantly being destroyed, annihilated and wiped out, as a result of which, as early as the third millennium, and indeed early on, the world is already being destroyed, annihilated, and wiped out. 
This means that already in the third millennium, and indeed early on before the year 2020, about one million living beings of the Aprox. 30 million diverse genera and species of plants and independently moving living beings that exist on Earth, down to the tiniest microbes that are more than 400 millionths of a millimeter small, will slowly but surely be irrevocably wiped out by the machinations of the endlessly growing Earth humans. Animals, all kinds of creatures, amphibians, lizards, birds, all kinds of water creatures, creeping creatures and insects, etc., will be largely or totally wiped out in the coming decades and far into the third millennium. Forests will be cleared and moors, etc., destroyed in all coming times in order to gain new planting land for the ever-increasing demand for growing food, while on the other hand, insanely fertile land will be built up and concreted over for housing, factories and roads, etc., and all this only for the sake of the endless growth of Earth humans, who in their irrationality drive their birth rates to ever higher heights, and without understanding, continue to bring their offspring into the world in vast numbers, thus creating a dangerous overpopulation through whose machinations nature, its flora, diverse living beings of all kinds and species are destroyed and many times completely exterminated. The oxygen content will also be impaired in its consistency by all kinds of artificial gases and gases rising from the earth, and the atmosphere will also be impregnated by all kinds of poisonous substances. The planetary sun protection layer will be largely destroyed, and overall climatic disturbances and ultimately a worldwide climate change will result, followed by a climate upheaval. This will result in far-reaching changes in the living conditions for all earthly life. And in addition, not only millions but ultimately billions of human beings will lose their lives when tremendous primeval catastrophes will cast their spell over the entire earth and all life. In the coming decades and further on in the third millennium, old epidemics that were thought to have been eradicated, as well as new unknown ones, will also take countless human lives. However, these epidemics will not arise through the natural course of nature, but through the fault of Earth humans. And this will happen in the future as a result of the emerging and ever-increasing internationalization and thus worldwide expansion and spread or mondialization, note Billy, globalization. This is because, due to the irresponsible and uncontrolled growth of the Earth's population, the transport of goods of all kinds around the Earth is increasing in great excess, and any safety measures are being disregarded. This will lead to dangerous pathogens being spread around the world by animals, insects and other creatures of all kinds, resulting in diseases and epidemics that on the one hand mutate, and on the other hand originally caused havoc only in their countries of origin. This is how it will be that in 30 years' time an immunodeficiency plague note Billy, AIDS will spread throughout the world, which has already arisen in Africa more than 30 years ago, when natives joined sexually with chimpanzees and in the process infected themselves with a virus that brought death and destruction, and the resulting plague began to spread. This epidemic will spread insidiously throughout the world in the coming decades, especially in homosexual circles, but will not be recognized until three decades from now, when more and more victims of the epidemic will be recognized as such. Henceforth, epidemics and diseases, etc., will spread more and more all over the world as epidemics and pandemics. This is to be understood that a normal epidemic is locally limited, but under certain circumstances an endemic form or an endemic can develop. If this becomes the case, then a disease or epidemic continuously accumulates in a certain population or limited region whereby the disease or epidemic continuously increases in comparison to other populations or regions, and this over a longer period of time. 
This results on the one hand in a disease frequency, and on the other hand also in a new disease frequency of the disease or epidemic in question. There is a great difference between disease and epidemic, but this fact is wrongly judged in the whole earthly medical science, is not accepted and remains so long into the third millennium due to the narrow-mindedness of medical science. A disease usually corresponds to an illness of a single human being, whereas a plague is contagious, rampant and widespread, and possibly fatal. The absolute difference between disease and pestilence will therefore not be observed for a long time, so that the difference between disease and pestilence will not be observed or accepted until well into the third millennium. A disease is not an epidemic, but a state of reduced physical efficiency due to a disturbance of the normal function of an organ or part of the body, which can usually be regulated, controlled, and cured by medical means for a short time, if it does not degenerate chronically. This is when a dysfunction or several dysfunctions are caused in one or more organs. Such disorders can also affect the entire physical organism, as well as the psychological sphere. A disease thus corresponds to a state of body, mind or consciousness that is contrary to the rules, requires intentional medical treatment, and usually causes a shorter or longer incapacity to work, but is resolved in the foreseeable future, and is usually also not fatal. In contrast to disease is epidemic, which is a highly contagious, malignant, infectious disease that is dangerous, spreads rapidly, and possibly leads to infirmity. Plagues are, for example, the plague, cholera, influenza, polio, smallpox, as well as salmonella, tuberculosis, typhus, syphilis, and Spanish flu, etc., all of which have been around since time immemorial, and some of which may also recur in the centuries to come. This in addition to the emergence of new epidemics in the coming decades, as well as in the course of the centuries of the third millennium. New epidemics are already appearing in the present 20th century, and as I said also in the next 21st century. Various new diseases and epidemics will become societal threats, and these will also spread throughout the earth. STDs will also rage and claim many victims, as I have already mentioned regarding the immunodeficiency plague, which will be followed by others with names like swine flu or severe acute respiratory syndrome, in the form of an atypical life-threatening pneumonia note. Billy. SARS, which will originate from China. Several types of avian influenza note Billy, bird flu, chicken flu, etc. Will also spread as epidemics from Asia, just as river fever note Billy, Ebola fever, and multi-mosquito fever note Billy, mosquito fever, will also spread from Africa. Note Billy, West Nile fever as a plague causes meningitis and encephalitis, but under certain circumstances also a clouding of consciousness, difficulty swallowing, dizziness, fatigue, exhaustion and constant headaches, loss of appetite, a feeling of pressure in the right upper abdomen. It also causes vomiting, incoordination, personality and behavioral changes and, if left untreated, Enlargement of the spleen, inflammation of the kidneys and pancreas, inflammation of the heart muscle, inflammation of the liver and jaundice. Criminality, crime and prostitution, etc. must also be addressed again and again, because their causes, from which in the times to come, far into the third millennium, much mischief will arise, are solely due to the degenerations of the world population which will in future be overflowing and to the irresponsibility, selfishness, and self-importance of the human beings. At the forefront of this are those responsible for the authorities and governments, who must be named as the main culprits because, as the people's leaders, they are the decisive forces who should be endeavoring to advise the people correctly and to do everything in the correct way in order to avoid all evils altogether and to lead the world and its humanity into a good, 
peaceful, free, and livable future. And part of this was that human beings would keep to the maximum number of human beings appropriate to the planet, which for the Earth is calculated to be 529 million, but which will already be exceeded many times over by the turn of the millennium and will then continue to increase. This, however, will ultimately lead to manifold catastrophes, for the machinations of the overflowing world population will destroy large parts of the planet by exploitation of resources, poisoning and all kinds of construction, just as enormous masses of manifold refuse will contaminate the seas, land waters, meadows, mountains and forests, etc., which will also happen through atomic radiation which will spread over wide areas and which will also exert mutational influences on life forms in a life-hostile and deadly way. The enormously increasing mass of the Earth's population, as well as its machinations, will not only affect the planet itself, but also its climate, nature, plants, and living beings, and will also destroy much of it, to such an extent that in some cases much will be irrevocably wiped out completely. It will also be the case in the future that many believers in religions and sects will officially abandon their religion or sect, but on the one hand only for the sake of the murderous terrorist army, their new delusion or for the sake of adventure. But on the other hand, in spite of the new faith they have adopted, they will retain their old delusion and will remain compliantly addicted to its dogmas and beliefs, and will preserve them. Therefore, they will also continue to disregard the natural creative laws, not obey them, and thereby prefer darkness to light, and not turn to the real and its truth. From this will come the opinion that death is better than life, which is why they will do as many of the earth humans do completely mistakenly, who will no longer look to the safety of life, but will prefer dying, whether by direct suicide or by indirect suicide in connection with acts of war or terrorism. Those human beings who have devoted themselves to reality and the truth arising from it, and thus also to the natural creative laws, and those who will also in the future devote themselves to what is right for creation, and who will shape and lead their lives in this way justly, honorably and with dignity, will be thought to be crazy and bad, while, as has been the case since time immemorial, the believers in God will be thought to be good people, and thus good and wise. And this will be as it has been since time immemorial, because the religious and sectarian human beings will become furious in their faith and do much that is evil, unjust and warlike and terroristic, for which they will be thought bold, brave and, in their lowliness of life, the best and the good, while they will insult and despise those who strive for peace and freedom, and thus also for reality and truth and for the natural creative laws. All this is what fallible human beings will do in the times to come, because their thoughts and feelings, as well as their psyche, their thoughts and aspirations, their conduct and behavior will be corrupt, because they will be unpeaceful, unfree and dissatisfied with everything that concerns them, precisely in contrast to those human beings who think in terms of reality and truth, who will be insulted and disgraced, harmed, harmed, and their lives threatened. But the believers, who in their mad conceit think that they are better and more entitled to life than those who sincerely strive for truth, love, peace, and freedom, will hope to attain immortality through their faith in their lying God. But they will be very bitterly disappointed, because they will not find their way out of their doubts about life nor out of their dissatisfaction and their cowardly fear. By this they will cast scorn, sarcasm, ridicule, and cynicism on the righteous who strive for reality and truth and live according to this way, as it will also be that they will be blasphemed, accused of deceit, lies, and conspiracy. 
but it will also be that they will be unjustly punished by jurisdictions if they openly spread the truth and state the real reality as their opinion. All this is the truth, which in the future will come to pass, come to pass and come to fulfillment in ever more blatant ways, as has also happened since time immemorial, whereby the God-believers, the know-it-alls and scientists, the philosophers and all, to whom the perception and recognition of the real natural reality is alien, try to humiliate all those human beings who, as knowing ones, strive for reality and for the given truth, with stupid laughter, with insults and mockery, and devalue their knowledge as nonsense and denigrate it as fraud. It will even be that there will be danger of death for those human beings living according to the truth who will hold fast to the cultivation of intellect, reason and intelligence, the knowledge of truth and unswervingly to reality. It will also be that many new legal systems and new laws will be enacted, which, however, will not refer to the doctrine of truth with a single word, but will, on the contrary, protect the false religious convictions and the believers in religion and sex, because this is supposedly worthy of heaven and prevents a regrettable divorce from taking place between God and human beings. As a result, wretched human beings will mingle with human beings who, through lies and slander, will brand those who know the truth as corrupt. Thus believers in religions and sex will lay hands on those who know the truth, or try to do so, and so many believers in their delusion will lead themselves to crime, war and terror, as well as to robbery, lies, slander, and betrayal, as well as to all that will bring serious harm to the nature of their own consciousness and psyche. So it will be the God-believers who believe themselves to be better and greater than those whom they insult as unbelievers in their unnatural faith as they have done since time immemorial, who in their delusion do everything evil and promote war and terrorism, demand punishments unworthy of life for others and themselves, take up arms to use them irresponsibly against fellow human beings, and to kill them. And through politics, religions and sectarianism, murdering and destroying terrorist organizations will arise worldwide, which will emotionally and conscienselessly rape women en masse and bestially murder, massacre, and also blaspheme innocent human beings. Everything will come apart at the seams and will no longer have any order, which will be difficult to maintain on a small scale, but will not be able to be fully restored. The earth itself will also fall out of balance and will no longer have a regular seasonal rhythm, but through the fault of mankind will bring immense natural disasters and manifold great calamities. Because through the mass of human overpopulation for the satisfaction of their desires, needs and senseless demands and wishes, an immense amount of nature and its flora and fauna will be destroyed annihilated and even many life forms will be exterminated, but also fertile lands will be senselessly built up, forests completely cleared, and the earth's resources completely exploited. And this will happen in the near and far future, just as the oceans, streams, rivers, and lakes will be fished out and become partly unnavigable. And it will be that almost all wildlife will be driven out or wiped out, and there will be hardly any habitat left for everything, because the completely irresponsible, rapidly growing mass of earthly mankind is unconscionably driving the planet, its nature and its fauna and flora towards extinction, and doing so ever faster and more radically. The regular course of the stars will also be disturbed, while the majority of earth humans, in their religious delusion, will not heed the voices of those human beings who, as knowers, know the real truth of reality and fight for it in an instructive manner, although attempts will be made to condemn their voices to silence, which, however, the delusional God-believers will not succeed in doing for some time. 
but the seed of truth will often and for a very long time not sprout, for the teaching of truth, teaching of the Spirit, teaching of life, will go unheard for a long time before the seed will sprout and bear fruit. Consequently, much of the good will still perish by then, and much of the earth will cease to be fruitful, just as the air will become heavy to breathe in gloomy slackness. There will be an absence of all order, as well as a confusion of all rules and values. And when all this will have come to pass, then the remnant that remains of earth human being will have to restore the sublime totality of the world in a very laborious way over many centuries and millennia, and will have to purge everything in peace, freedom, and goodness in order to put an end to all the offenses that have taken place and to the general depravity of earth human being. But it will come to pass that earth humans will be decimated by pestilence, and the world will be consumed with fire by wars and terrorism. And many things will be completely destroyed by the degenerations of the overpopulation masses. And the question arises whether mankind wants to preserve the earth and give it back its primeval beauty, and whether it will be able to do so at all. If these very serious predictions, whose fulfillment is inevitable, are taken into consideration. Then it must be recognized and understood that in the coming times they will bring great upheavals far into the third millennium. First of all, unprecedented prosperity for all strata of the population, and also immense wealth for many, who will become millionaires and billionaires many times over. As a result, human beings will become selfish self-seeking and greedy as never before, whereby crime and violent crime will also increase to a great extent, whereby all the rules of good will also be maliciously corrupted and abused. And this will be so, as also innumerable human beings will abandon all their good intentions, whereby degenerating anarchistic machinations will arise, whereby especially juveniles and middle-aged people will be affected. And there will also be many among them who will strive for years or decades and do many things possible to point the world and the individual human beings in a better and good direction and to make them value life. In many of these human beings, however, after some time, after months, years or decades, the old habits which they have only suppressed but not overcome, will again come to the surface and break through to the outside, if in the course of time they are unable to realize their own desires, hopes, and wishes, and consequently are unable to confirm themselves and give themselves a dominant place. Their displeasure and desire for domination, their vices, addictions and discontents, their selfishness and self-importance, etc., will again overpower them and force them to abandon the efforts they have been striving for for some time. Consequently, they will relapse into their old irresponsible ways of life and behavior and even become slanderous and angry against previous like-minded people. All that is good and progressive, as well as all that is worth living for will be forgotten by many human beings and trampled into the mud, whereby there will also be a falling away from all morality and thereby a corruption of morals up to and including the open and taxable whoring permitted by the state, such as will never before have appeared. And further, bloody and radical extremist groups will emerge from the last world war in a Nazi-like murderous and criminal manner, both in Europe, Russia, the USA, and in other countries all over the earth. However, many delusion-based and degenerated murderous terrorist organizations will also emerge, especially in Arab and Near Eastern countries, as well as directly in Asian states or in the Orient, as I have already explained. At the same time, however, America, with its secret service and warlike machinations, will also cause a great deal of mischief through war, murder, and destruction. 
The various terrorist organizations that will come into being in the next few decades as a result of the intelligence and war crimes of the USA will spread around the world, as will also various later terrorist organizations that will also come into being as a result of the criminal military and intelligence machinations of the United States of America and will cause hundreds of thousands of deaths. However, also, the USA itself will not be spared by this emerging terrorism, especially when at the beginning of the new millennium New York will be hit by much suffering and destruction and terror will claim thousands of human lives. Note Billy. World Trade Center rocker terrorist attacks on 11th of September 2001 where at the same time four coordinated aeroplane hijackings took place and these aeroplanes were steered by al-Qaeda terrorists into the World Trade Center, into the Pentagon and into a field near Shanksville, about 100 kilometers east of Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania, resulting in the total death of thousands of human beings. It is all caused by the world domination greed of the USA itself, which will stupidly and thoughtlessly train hostile and devious revolutionaries of various countries of South America, etc., as well as Arab religious fanatics, etc., in a military guerrilla way, who will be organized in the background in a terrorist way and will later attack the hated hegemonic United States of America and bring thousands of deaths and destruction to their country. But soon thereafter, a new tremendously violent criminal terrorist organization will be formed in the Oriental region, which will conduct such a bloody handiwork as has never before taken place under the guise of a religion. Also, the emergence of this terrorism will be due to America's fault and will bring unspeakable suffering even to the whole world. This new Islamic note, Billy, Islamist delusional terrorism will become so enormous that only the heaviest military operations and battles will be able to control it only partially for many years, only to defeat it to a large extent towards the end of the second decade in the next millennium. However, all armies and countries involved will then erroneously assume that this Islamic degenerated terrorist organization will have come to an end, which will by no means be the case, because the view of the future proves that this terrorist organization will continue to exist worldwide in secret, with thousands of fugitive perpetrators of the original terrorist organization returning unmolested to their home countries or being sheltered and protected as fraudulent refugees in some country or other. In particular, the emerging union dictatorship and a self-important and power-obsessed, yet incompetent and in various respects insane, state leader in Germany will advocate open hands to offer shelter and protection to returnees and fugitives from the Islamic terrorist organization, note Billy, Miez, Islamist State, as well as millions of refugees from developing countries and from Arabia. This, however, will lead to a certain Islamization in Europe, but especially in Germany and will partly be marked by criminality and serious violent crimes. This will especially be the case due to criminal and criminal elements, who will infiltrate Germany as refugees from the Islamic terrorist organizations in Syria and Iraq, etc., due to the unpredictable state leaders and their stupidity, which will not only lead to a peaceful Islamization, but also to a special criminal and criminal Islamization note, Billy asks Islamistization. But from this will arise catastrophic antisocial conditions and a rapidly spreading criminality and crime subculture, which then cannot be reversed even by all kinds of new laws and regulations and special task forces. It will then be especially the stupidity stricken and, moreover, irresponsible leaders of the European countries, who will be caught in the claws of the Union dictatorship and will only have a say in things for appearance's sake, who will be specifically targeted and exploited by the returnees and fugitives from the Islamist terrorist organization.
And this will happen because in the coming times and far into the new millennium, the majority of all state powers worldwide, in their mindless and senseless ignorance and inability to govern, as well as in their delusion of power and striving for enrichment, will drive the countries to ruin over the heads of the peoples. The self-opinionated power mongers of the emerging Union dictatorship will enact vicious new laws and decrees throughout Europe directed against the freedom and peace of the countries and peoples, and in the course of time will transform the Union dictatorship into a slave-dominating dictatorship. If in the Orient the only apparent end of the Islamist terrorist organization takes place, it follows, however, that in the meantime, all other terrorist and criminal organizations around the world cannot be stopped even by large police, security, and military forces. However, long before this worldwide rampant terrorist organization will emerge in Arabia, which will be joined by hundreds of misguided people from all over Europe, as well as tens of thousands of juveniles and middle-aged, misguided, Work shy, adventurous, delusional and criminal human beings from Arabia and all over the world, who will then spread torture, horrible deaths, rape and destruction, a dictatorship union will be established in Europe, with its headquarters in Belgium, which will be joined by the European countries. Through this dictatorship, which will be directed by power-addicted rulers and will be intent on bringing all European countries under its thumb, as well as possibly non-European countries, the traditional enmity of the West against Russia will be rekindled and, together with America, will be viciously stirred up through infamous machinations in order to provoke an armed conflict under certain circumstances. The time will also come in the new millennium when millions of refugees from African, Asian, and Arab countries will flood the European states because an unpredictable ruler in Germany and contributor to the dictatorship union will call for refugee behavior in Africa, Arabia, and Asia. As a result, sometime after the turn of the millennium, thousands of criminals, violent criminals, and terrorists will infiltrate into the countries of the dictatorship union, and no one will be able to keep them under control. Also, from the beginning of the 1980s onwards, great worldwide unemployment will spread, as will inflation, and many national debts will get out of hand and all foodstuffs, other goods, insurances, and all conceivable things will become more and more expensive. Financial institutions and postal services will defraud the peoples, thereby amassing immense fortunes and immensely rewarding the executives, which they will do by laying off a great many workers and also closing innumerable branches, thereby forcing the populations to do, at their own expense and toil. The work of those who will be laid off by banks and postal services, thereby amassing immense fortunes for the bank and postal services at the expense of the citizenry and their upper elites. Overall, however, the value of money for the populations will decrease worldwide, which will be especially the case in Europe through the introduction of European money. This will especially drive the member states and the populations of the dictatorial union emerging in Europe into horrendous debts, as mismanagement will also result in financial debts of the peoples or even threatening bankruptcies of the financial institutions, which in several cases can only be prevented by state financial aid. All this